Hey, we're back playing Vampire Survivors. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, I just need to tell you, I'm a little bit under the weather. I'm going to try, to try to keep my voice at a restrained level today. It might sound like, you know, when they play a trumpet and it goes like, Beep! and then they play a, a trumpet with a mute on it and it goes like, Beep! I may sound permanently for today diminished. Okay. It's not like I've, I've, I've just got a little congestion up at the nasal pharyngeal area. Start me up. We're gonna, we need to do better today. I, let's give me Antonio and place me on the library. I think I can win today. Rumbleverse season two announced. MMR will be fixed. Fool me once. Shame on me. Fool me twice. Shame on. We, we won't get fooled again. Okay, let me get the cross this time. There's no sound. You know what? That makes sense. I was wondering why nobody was pogging up about the music. How about that? Is that better? Dan already delayed his Persona 5 sponsored stream to go pick up a $7 Harry Potter Lego set. Dude, it's so good. It's, he's doing that. Hey, listen. Who needs to do your job to make money when you could start making money with the ten dollars to $100,000 challenge flipping stuff from garage sales on the Facebook, Facebook marketplace? It is funny, though. I told him if you want to... I told him there was a, a foolproof way to get $100,000. He said, how? I said, start with $3.5 million and buy Peloton stock at the peak. But I'm bummed. It is li it's literally down like 96% or something like that. So I did. It was just a quick back of the napkin calculation. But that's a that's a riff on a classic old. Um, wait, wait. Does Candelabrador work with um, uh, with the cross? It works with axe. Okay. In that case, I'm going to take Santa water. I'm taking all weapons. No Peloton today? No, l listen to me and look at me. No physician on earth would be like, you know what your body needs right now is like a 30 minute high intensity interval training ride. Is what a, what a stupid question. <laughs> Are you crazy? I would. You're not a doctor, obviously. You're here in Twitch chat. Or maybe you, I, honestly, maybe that's why I can't get an appointment at the doctor is because they're all shitposting nonstop. I was talking, so there's an Isaac episode is, is going to go up, you know, today or tomorrow. I got, like, legitimately mad at my mom, and it was not her fault at all. But when she was here, we were talking about, like, you know, how the medical system has changed. And she said, like, when she grew up in the, basically, like, the early 70s, if you were sick... Your mom called the doctor, and the doctor came to your house to do an actual house call. Now, keep in mind, this is like two months after, while I was, like, nearly dying, I still couldn't get any relevant medical attention at all. Even sometimes when I would go, I would bring myself to the hospital and be like, Hey, doc, look at my damn leg. The doctor would be like... Yeah, I don't know. You seem like a young guy. You seem pretty healthy. We're just gonna like wait and see with this one. You're gonna you're gonna wait and see like uh, my my freaking eulogy at this point. But anyway, <clears throat> I I got mad at her, and she understood that it wasn't her fault, and I wasn't actually like mad at her on a personal level. But I was like, what happened? We used to be a proper country. You used to have a cold. <clears throat> Yo, we can see the synergies now. Look at this. You used to have a cold, you would call a doctor, they would drive to your fucking house and be like, yep, that's a cold. I don't know, eat some soup or something like that. Nowadays, you could be dying and your doctor won't even see you. Like, I, you drive to the doctor's office and they're like, what the hell are you doing here? Get out of here. It's crazy. Now you gotta, you gotta fight with the doctor just to be like, no, I promise, I'm really sick. I'm actually sick. Anyway, I would love to know your thoughts on this. What do you think of Fisher Random? 
Oh, chess. Chess, I think it's such a quaint game. I used to love it when I was a little bit more simple-minded, but then I found the, the limitations just sort of started to chafe at me a little bit. A fixed 8x8 grid, symmetrical positions, equal odds for both sides. Now I play uh, Ebony Online, a game with a little bit more complexity, more befitting an intellect of my stature. So pedestrian. No fog of war. When Magnus Carlsen came to me, whether it's uh, London systems that become drawish, gambits that don't work, or accusations of, that of a libelous nature, when he came to me asking for a collaboration for uh, Domekeeper, if I'd asked him to get on his knees and beg, he would not have done it. He would not have. Excuse me here. Sorry, raising my voice a little bit. Just raising my voice. I'm, I can tell the tea is already... It's, it's still too hot. There's nothing already about it, but it's still too hot. <clears throat> yeah, there's only 10 to the power of 40 possible permutations. I love the... Like the, the, so that's an Elon Musk tweet that chess is too simple for him, essentially. But I love, I saw like a tweet because I follow some chess people that was like, this is one of the most insane um, statements I've ever seen. There's actually like the dumbest people on earth are so convinced that they're smart. And I'm not actually talking about Elon in this case. I'm talking about the people who for whatever reason are like, nothing he says could ever be wrong. Give me spinach. There are people that are like, there's only, actually Elon's right, chess is so simple, there's only 20 possible opening moves and 20 possible responses. Okay, now, first off, that's a fucking lot. That's like 4,000 possible positions at the end of move one. Why don't you do move two now, motherfucker? Why don't you follow that sequence down the line and tell me when you start to get into like the billions of possible uh, board states? Sorry, 400, not 4,000. I'm sick, you can't judge me. Give me a duplicator, man. That's right, what is it, like move, move six? There's like a billion possible board states or something? Probably not, maybe it's like move 10, but still. Yeah, 400 is still a lot. I mean, have you ever played like Civilization? There's like four possible move states. at the start of the game. You're like, am I going agriculture or am I going masonry? Am I going pottery or am I going faith? Am I going Stonehenge or am I going uh, the, the Great Pyramids of Ibiza? Especially with the Brave New World expansion. So true. Help. I did like, though, when he said that Gary Kasparov isn't as good at chess as his iPhone. I thought that was kind of like a sick own. But then also, like, very few of us are good at, are as good at many things as our iPhones are. Like, you could be, like, the best person at, uh, you know, arithmetic in the world. Your iPhone's still gonna, like, kick your ass. You're better at walking. I mean, for now. Have you seen what Boston Dynamics is up to? I'll tell you straight up. If somebody walked, if I was walking on the street and somebody came up to me and then like full stomp kicked me in the solar plexus, I would not merely stumble. I think that I would fall. I believe I would fall over. I can stay awake for more than 24 hours. Yeah, because you're not doing anything. Your iPhone could have 24 hours of battery life too if it was just like sitting there like a sack of potatoes. If it's actually like, you know, using its processing power, then it, yeah, of course it's gonna get tired. No disrespect or whatever. <laughs> 
I'm amazed, by the way. I've been long been a proponent of the idea that you can't have shit in Vancouver. Uh, Exhibit Z was us getting our barbecue covers stolen from our patio. Not the barbecue itself, but just the cover stolen from our patio. We got the guy on security footage. I'm telling you, if I ever see him, it's, it's on site. If I ever see a Coleman barbecue cover out at Oppenheimer Park, there's going to be words exchanged, even though I already bought a new one. But I can't believe it. Domino's here, or maybe it's Pizza Hut. They unveiled a pizza delivery uh, robot. So it's like a little robot. Um, it's basically like a, an autonomous... I don't know how to describe it. It's like a little cart that goes on the sidewalk that you shove a pizza into and it delivers it to its location. Um, I'm amazed that it has not been stolen yet. Like it's, or at least like, you know, robbed. It's stunning to me that it, uh, I've, I have not seen a news story that's like, absolute like idiots at Pizza Hut didn't anticipate this happening, but check it out. It, it, it actually, it's been like a month and I don't think there's been a single, uh, an incident of violence towards the Pizza Hut robot. Which is kind of amazing. Okay, Axe works with Candelabra. I think we want Axe here, just in general. We can get Candelabra later. I mean, you don't have to be... like a huge asshole to vandalize a pizza delivery robot from Pizza Hut. You could literally just be, like, 12 years old. I was not a bad kid, but, like, if me and my friends in 7th grade had no witnesses and the pizza delivery robot, like, drove by us, we probably would have at least tipped it over. Or, like, flipped it 180 or something like that, just to see what happens. Yeah, you, like, throw it into the... Throw it into English Bay or something like that. Duplicate me. Bro, that's not being a bad kid. You ever seen Maury? Nobody on Maury is like, I hate my mom, Maury. She doesn't let me throw the pizza delivery robot into the river. Everyone on Maury is like, you know, I hate my mom. She won't let me smoke crack in my bedroom. And you're like, oh my God. How did it get to this point? Then you go to the playground and you see the laissez-faire attitude that a lot of parents have towards their kids. And you're like, you know what? I can see how that happens. First, they're pretending to be asleep on the slide so that like nobody else can go down it. Then they're pushing other kids over. And then, you know, fifth grade, they're like, it's time for my crack arc. I'm such a, a crack pill drug cell, mom. It's not a phase. Anyway, this is a little macabre. Would love to know your thoughts on this. I'm sick. I can't be judged for what I'm saying. My brain is d diffused with mucus right now. When was your crack arc? Honestly, here's the scary thing. It hasn't happened yet. So it must be on the horizon, right? I mean, if you ever see VH1's behind the music, like, everyone has a crack arc. Doesn't this work with... No, it's Hollow Heart works with the whip. Okay, okay. Go fire one on him. Yeah, maybe wait, when we run out of ideas. One day we'll do a just chatting stream where we get addicted to, like, hard drugs. I'm just kidding. Honestly, like, I think that that era is past. If it was ever going to exist in the first place. Now I'm like, you know, have I? I've told you the the streamer paradigm. How it's like when you when you stream long enough, you basically choose whether you're going to become Germa and start to be ambitious or quiet quit. I made the choice at some point. I think to quiet quit. Because doing ambitious content, like getting addicted to hardcore narcotics, it just, it honestly, it seems like a lot of work. 
I could just be here, like, playing Vampire Survivors instead. Like, that's pretty easy. We want it. We want it. We want it. We want it. It's too much work, man. <clears throat> you made that choice when you played Afterbirth Plus for three years? That was the hardest I've ever worked in my entire life. When they removed all the damage upgrades from the game as a joke. I'm out of here having to say, I'm not mad at the game. I promise I don't hate the game. I just want a damage upgrade. Please, just give me a damage upgrade. I beg you. Cool whip. Look at that. We're melting them. Feels good, man. No damage arc was good. I'm glad it's behind me, hopefully. Although I recorded three Isaac episodes yesterday. And, uh... Let me just say, the rumors of good items being added to, uh... Isaac is, uh... Greatly exaggerated. What the heck is the Adams Family Stan account? Okay, Lore Masters! Can I... Can we get some explanations here? There is a, three or four months ago, okay? The, um... The trailer for The Munsters, directed by Rob Zombie, came out, and I said it was pure ass. It was so pure ass that it made me want to create a, um, a Twitter account that was called, like, Adam's Family Stan Accounts, and just tweet shade at everything. A anybody tweeting about The Munsters, just tweet them and say, like, Adams is stay winning. Yet another common Munsters L, etc., etc. Um, and then a member of the community did that, but then they've also blossomed into like an all-time great shit posting plus like fan edited YouTube content account. Like it's just it. it that's why we support original derivative content here. What people every time you minus 2 a bit, you prevent the growth of something like the library of Laterno, right? I hope you realize that now. A lot of people minus 2 the Adams family stan account bit. They said that's stupid. It's too close to real life. Guess what? You would have you, you you would have stepped on this little seedling. You would have fried it with a magnifying glass before it had the chance to grow into a beautiful oak tree. BRB making my McDonald's Sprite gimmick account right now. Okay, but none of you fuckers who make these accounts better like become white supremacists or anything like that. It's gonna reflect really badly on me. They started as a Northern Lion fan-edited YouTube channel, and now they're doing interviews uh, on, like, banned websites. Do not do this, okay? I mean, for the obvious reason, but also for the less obvious reason that it would reflect poorly on me. Do not become. Stop asking me about where Squeaks was on January 6th. I told you, he was in Washington, D.C. It was me, Squeaks, and Ariel Pink in a hotel room, okay? But we weren't at the riots, okay? We were just there to sample some of the culture, and then things got, like, really, like, scary. So we just went back to the hotel room. We just happened to be there at the wrong time, okay? Dude, honestly, I, I had the chance to watch Squeaks play a little Resident Evil 2 remake last night. I hope you guys appreciate Squeaks. Because he, he, like, does all these horror game streams. He's genuinely, he gets so scared. Like, whenever anything, like, startles him, he go he screams... And then he pauses the game and goes, I can't do this. I can't do this. He gets so scared every single time, and yet he keeps playing the game. I don't think I would ever... Like, after one embarrassing stream like that, I would never play a horror game ever again. I, uh... 
I take myself too seriously. Yeah, and he keeps saying, why is it so loud? Like, every time he gets scared, he goes to the options menu. The options menu. <laughs> and he goes, why is it so... It's not scary, it's just loud. It's great stuff. Hey, what do I want here? Can I have some help? Can I skip? Can I increase my luck for it? No. Nothing, unfortunately. It's still too hot, man. It's... We gotta... It's too insulated, man. We gotta make these teacups less insulated. I poured it 37 minutes ago. Hold on, I gotta mute for a second. Do I have some tissue in my Bobby Cannavale? Nah, you're good? All right, thank you, thank you. It's too hot, I can't breathe. Something about it stinks. The water doesn't stink. Dude, it's crazy how um, Tim Robinson has, like, sous vide himself in the cultural consciousness. Everybody's posting, I think you should leave gifts now. Dean Norris searching, I think you should leave now gifts. Uh, the old man from the focus group sketch is doing a cameo in Ant-Man. Which means we've officially crossed the bat chest threshold on <laughs> I think we should leave. <laughs> or I think you should leave. So is Bill Murray. Yes, that's true. So is Bill Murray. But I'm not going to hold that against him. Please stop asking me about the Vancouver Canucks. At this point, honestly, losing is more exciting than winning. I hope we never win another game. Santa Water. Keep that streak going. We're like two losses away from tying a, a modern record for the worst start to a season. And then the only... If we get two straight losses... The only team above us is like one of those, uh, it's like the 1917 Montreal Maroons or something like that. It's like back in the day where you could just steal the best player from another team by going like, you know, here's $50 and like a, a clean bed. Like we're not comparing things to the modern day anymore if we get two straight losses. Remember the Sedins? How could I forget? Be best moment of the Canucks decade? Sedin's last home game. Daniel Sedin wins it in overtime with a goal assisted by Henrik. That that's a that's a movie moment right there. Yeah, we're we're, we're only like a week away from competing with teams where it was like half the team was killed by the Spanish flu. So like that's how our season has started so far. By the way, like we were projected to be like um a borderline playoff team. Like, we weren't projected to be very good, but we were projected to be demonstrably not bad. And now we're competing with teams where it's like, the captain passed away in a trench in the First World War. So it's a, it's been a bit of a shock, to, this, to say the least, at the start of the season here. Fire one, please. No, I'm not going to throw anything onto the ice. I don't want it, like... First off, it's just entertainment. Secondly, like, I don't want to make trouble for, like, the cleanup crew. I just think it's very selfish to be like, you know... It's not a huge deal, but I don't want that, that poor guy in the team jacket to have to skate out onto the ice and use a shovel to pick up my jersey. Like, that's... I'm not the main character. 
<laughs> delay the game for like, uh, you know, 45 seconds for 20,000 people in the audience. Like, that's not me. But I will say, like, I've been laughing at some of the takes that are like, I can't believe someone would just go throw a $300 jersey onto the ice. That's, that's good money. That's $300. Listen, I don't know if you're like, uh, commerce pilled. The thing is only worth $300 until you pay for it. As soon as you pay for it, that shit is worth like $25 at a garage sale. Nobody wants your your worn eight-year-old jersey that you've been spilling beers on for like almost an entire decade. It's the team store can sell it for $300. You're actually only throwing like the price of like a, a Burger King two can dine coupon onto the ice, okay? Only the store can get away with valuing it at 300 bucks because that's what people will pay for it as a captive audience. If I, I'm, I'm telling you though, I hope my wife is not listening right now. If we get to the point where we're throwing jerseys on the ice, the first one that's going on the ice is her 2014-2015 Radom Verbata jersey, number 17. Wasn't a complete disaster for the Canucks, but that's a jersey that I don't have that much attachment to. The Besser jersey, I would never. The Sedin jerseys, no chance. The Verbata jersey can go first. But I gotta tell you, right now I am feeling pretty good about the fact that I, I didn't uh, get any names stitched onto the back of my Black Skate jersey yet. I, th I thought about getting some names stitched on it, but then I was like, you know what, let's wait until the team has some level of success. And then um, then I'll get someone's name stitched on it. And it seems like we might be um, trading the entire team away. So I'm, I'm glad I didn't sink any extra money into that jersey just yet. Did you meet JT Miller at a pumpkin patch recently? Okay, so here's the joke. JT Miller, a Canucks player. Someone on the Canucks subreddit said, I work at a pumpkin patch and it's gone too far. People at the pumpkin patch were heckling JT Miller to his face with his kids. Like in the... His kids were there too. And I, I, as I saw this post before the controversy happened. And I was like, that seems like something that did not happen. Then I went into the person's Reddit profile because I'm a psycho like that and I've got a lot of practice from doing it on my own subreddit. And then I scrolled down and there were photos of this guy. He's like a teenager and he's he's at a pumpkin patch. Like two or three weeks ago, he posted like, hey, check it out. Look at all these Canucks players that came to my pumpkin patch. And he's got selfies with like Curtis Lazar and Tanner Pearson and stuff like that. And I was like, oh shit, this is real. Then yesterday, they asked JT Miller if the pumpkin patch story was real because, you know, we live in a, a psychotic media market. And he said, he said, I was not at a pumpkin patch this weekend. That's not real. I was like, what the? I, I'm honestly, I think I'm a pumpkin patch truther. I think he was at the pumpkin patch, but he doesn't want people to know that he was ridiculed in public, which is fair. So he just denies that it happened. But I like looking in the OP's posts, I don't think that he made it up. It seems like something that is made up, but the story kind of tracks because he's got, you know, independent photos of him with Canucks players working at the damn pumpkin patch. I don't know. I would love to know your thoughts on this. I don't know. I don't know, okay? This is what, when your sports team sucks, this is what you gotta do. I'm, I don't even, I'm not gonna watch the games, like, until we start winning again. Instead, I'm just gonna post every day about, you know, my evidence for pumpkin patch truth. Surely there's gotta be security footage from the pumpkin patch that we could use to verify these claims. Although I will say we do we have tickets for the November 1st Devils at Canucks game. Increasingly it's becoming clear to me that I may be present for my team's first uh, victory of the season, which I did not expect to happen um, a week into November. Or maybe we'll 
still lose that game as well. Who knows? It's possible. Who are we? We're... I keep getting these. I mean, I apologize. This is like two sports pilled. I keep getting these like insulting emails from the Canucks organization that are like, "Act fast! Tickets are limited for uh, Penguins at Canucks this Friday." And I'm like, "They can't be that limited, or you wouldn't be emailing me." Like, how stupid do you think I am? I follow the team. If the tickets were limited, you wouldn't be sending me an email. You'd be sending me an email that's like, uh, Oh, sorry, they're all sold out. Anyway. So that's hockey. It's not that serious. It's just sports at the end of the day. No big deal. Okay, be honest with me. Chat, we're winning this one, right? Like, look at the... Look at the resources we got. We're walking again. We're about to get an upgraded axe. That's the last thing we need, but in like a good way. It's literally, you know, people say that's the last thing we need. This is the last thing on the grocery list. It's the last thing we need. I would say it's 50-50. Really? If you say so. Oh, dude, the orbs. That attract orb is feeling good. Did you have your coffee today? Uh, it's a day that ends with Y, so yes. <laughs> what a silly question. Of course I had my coffee today. Look at this, man. Don't get cocky, you died at 29.59 yesterday. Wrong. I died at 29.55 yesterday, okay? There's a, there's a subtle and mostly semantic difference. Oh, it's 29.30. Okay, never mind. My mistake. Boy, I sure hope somebody got fired for that blunder. the hell is this? Frank Ocean's cock ring? Yep. Okay, thank you. Dude, being sick is so fun. You can literally say whatever you want and not be criticized. Me tomorrow? I'd like to apologize for my statements on stream yesterday. I understand that having the common cold doesn't excuse some of the fucked up shit that I said. I'd like to apologize to my sponsors and <laughs> my family. <laughs> oh. I'd like to apologize for the messed up things I said to the chatter who said pre-toast bread was the dumbest idea they've ever heard of. Even though we disagree on uh, business ideas, that was no reason to resort to personal attacks. It was unbecoming of a streamer in my position. I'd like to say I'm sorry. That's not the kind of man that I am. Peloton will never drop me. Dude, if they if Peloton decided I was a brand risk and then they uh, like put an iron what do they call it? It's not an iron lung when they put it on your car. An an iron boot? If they if they booted my damn Peloton I mean, oh, no! I mean, it never could go anywhere to begin with, but at least the the flywheel could spin. We got this. Look at this. Look at the look at the lightning ring, man. Look at this. It's over. We'll see. Dude, that's... Yeah, if they ever want to, like, uh, get someone to cancel their Peloton subscription, just start giving them shout-outs. But, like, negative shout-outs? Can you imagine if you got, like, 15 minutes into a Dennis Morton Fresh Friday run? And he was like, you know, 
Hey, Northern Lion, you sack of shit, you fat piece of garbage. Get out of my ride, you piece of shit. I'd be, I'd be throwing off my stroke for sure. I'd be like, I gotta get out of here. I didn't come to this bike to, I don't pay 60 bucks a month to be condescended to, okay? Dennis. Also, I don't know if you guys ever go to the uh, Peloton subreddit, r slash Peloton cycle. But it's very funny to me. And th this is extremely judgmental, so I'd like to apologize. But people will make threads. They'll be like, hi, I'm a 55-year-old man. Um, I did my 300th ride yesterday live with Ali Love, and I didn't get a shout-out. I know it's silly, but would it be absolutely insane if I deleted the ride that I just took and then did another live ride for 300 so that I could possibly get a shout out? And uh, all of the replies are like, no, you should definitely do that. You should totally... What you should actually do is do 99 five minute warm up rides really quick. And then for your 400th ride, go back. You're more likely to get a shout out for your for your 400th ride anyway. Or th th people will say like, and you're entitled to use it however you want to use it. For the record, I'm just judgmentaling you. I'm judging you. Um, people will say things like, um, "Oh yeah, the American instructors are kind of stingy." with their shout outs. What I do is wake up at 2 a.m. for all of my milestone rides and then I take a ride with a German instructor. And people are like, do you speak German? And they're like, that's the funny part. No. Just 29 minutes and 50 seconds of uh, complete confusion, not knowing what's going on. Then the brief little dopamine hit when you hear something, 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 your username, something, something, yes! It was all worth it. It was all worth it. To hear Mela Vedekin say my username for the first time. I guess people are just lonely. Maybe I should stop, like, punching down. But it is kind of crazy. I'm like, you're a grown adult. Anyway, we'd love to know your thoughts on this. These people get lonely. I just can't imagine riding a bike so a stranger says your name. But then again, I, I do know what business I'm in, so... it's a good point. Fair enough. We're right here. Yeah, but like, I very rarely say people's names. Instead, I just steal what they say in chat. And then pass it off as my own the way Justin from Justin TV intended when he made the website. It's basically like a joke aggregator. Chat is like, you know, 5,000 people type what they think is the funniest thing at any given moment. I read them all and then just pick the funniest one and people go, wow, this guy's hilarious. Hey, 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 hey. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Wow, wow, wow. I, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say your names. I'm gonna I'm saying them mentally and I'm appreciating them mentally. I'm not gonna say them out loud, okay? Because I'm I'm principled, okay? I I'm gonna remember them. I know you didn't do it just to get your name said out loud, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it. I it would I know that you're too smart to own, to give $25 to Twitch to have me say your name. So I'm not going to do you a disservice by insinuating that that's what you wanted. It's just not the way we operate here. Clueless. Clueless. NL Findom arc starts. Dude, honestly... I think being a financial dominatrix, it might be like the only job on earth that maybe is like better than being a Twitch streamer. Maybe this is like uh, a bad take, but I feel like it's kind of like the easiest job of all time, which is not this, and I get that it's just the pot calling the kettle black, but like, 
Don't you just post a picture of yourself in like a leather corset and go like, hey, you little pay pigs, give me your paycheck, you, you limp dick piece of shit. And then people are like, oh my God, okay, here you go. And then they give you like, their, like a whole month's salary. And then you go like, that's it. And then they're like, oh, it was worth it. Anyway, we'd love to know your thoughts. Thanks for all the gifted subscriptions, by the way. Thanks for all the gifted subscriptions. How do you know? Because it always shows up on Twitter. There'll be like a trending topic that's like, you know, Canucks at Sabres. And then you click on it and it's like, hey, you little Canucks pay pigs. Why don't you send me $500 right now, you dumb bitch? And then it's like there are people, a bunch of like 55-year-old men in the comments right below it that are like, what's your Venmo? Like it's... It seems like it's a dream setup. As long as, if everybody's happy with it, then it's okay. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It just seems like kind of a dream arrangement. Did you guys see the, the insider report from Twitter? That uh, Twitter's uh, most active users are increasingly leaving the platform. And the only uh, subcategories that are keeping the website afloat are not safe for work content and crypto discussions. I would say that's bullish for the corporation at large, personally. It seems like a, it seems like a healthy website right now. <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. Go in the middle for more DPS? I kind of feel like, and I'm not just trying to be pedantic, I kind of feel like wherever I am becomes the middle in this game. Like, look at these enemies are so obsessed with me, man. Help me. Look at this. Look at this. We made it. it. It's it's already better than yesterday's run. It's a new record. Give me some floor chickens. Just keep the floor chickens coming. I know it's not always going to be necessary here, but... It's all the lightning ring, man. If the if the lightning ring goes off, we're doing okay. Lightning ring! Two seconds. Let's go! Whatever. What are you going to do? Oh, kill me? All righty. We actually won a game. I don't believe it. Playoffs? We've unlocked a uh, panda. How do we do here? What was our best DPS? Thunderloop. Isn't that a Garth Brooks song? It's crazy. Yeah, the game was like not lagging. I didn't even think about that. We need to buy things so that we can unlock more things. Like coming back to life seems like it might be useful for those situations like we had at the end there experience though yeah experience pardon me excuse me let me see let me see if my freaking my tea is drinkable it's still so hot <clears throat> just give me two growth i'm okay with that i saw someone in chat say that's the way to do it and then can I buy the panda as well? Sure. And let's give him a try. But uh, let me, let's slash marker. 